Man, all I'm saying is I'm glad J.K. Rowling didn't write this episode of Reign of Seven Spellblades. God damn, because this was a really good episode, and I'm glad a good author decided to write this, because we get introduced to the concept of reversi, which I wasn't sure what was going on with Pete at first, because Pete basically has, like, this dream sequence. We see, like, there's a chest, and then wakes up, and yeah, 100% female body. I was like, okay, either one of two things is happening... Pete was a girl all along and maybe just magically developed extra or someone like drugged Pete because we've already seen a lot of bullying in this school. I wouldn't put it past some students to slip uh, some boy in their school this like gender sex changing potion or something and then just causing a ruckus. Turns out it's actually a pretty interesting mechanic in this world. And what we end up getting is basically Ally Oliver, who attends the kind of the reversey group here, which surprisingly didn't turn into chaos, was actually just this really wholesome little party where they get to see similar people to them who can basically switch between male or female. Maybe you can control it eventually, but in terms of Pete, it is something that will just randomly happen. So I don't think Pete is 100% stuck always in female form, potentially could go back to male or maybe will stay in the female form, but it seems like Pete still considers himself a dude, all things considered. But the interesting thing is how they're going the route of different, like if you're female, elements such as lightning, basically you have a much more, you have a better ability to use certain elements like that. So Pete before couldn't use lightning, but now because of the female body, he can. And I like how rather than just simply going the route of being like, okay, Pete, you now have a female body. We need to change you back. This is wrong. They, like Oliver pretty much immediately brings it up that this can happen to people when they're confused about, you know, not fitting in or which gender they are and stuff. And the idea of just casually introducing gender fluid mages and the idea that you have alive brooms that pick you similar to like the Harry Potter stuff with like the wand chooses you. Same thing with the brooms in here. You actually get yourself one hell of a Reign of the Seven Spellblades episode and honestly, once again, props to this author for making a very interesting and living and breathing world. Now I do have a full live reaction to today's wonderful Reign of Seven Spellblades episode available on my Patreon. If you would like to see that, it is over there if you're interested. Now there's a lot to break down. Now I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to get upset that we didn't just jump into Oliver's slitting another teacher's throat, but to be fair, we did get to see the whole damn crew that we're probably going to hunt down. One of the teachers, I'm a little not sure if is on our target list because it turns out to be, well, of course, our girl's father. And I don't know how well she would take it if we had to slit Daddy Dearest's throat. I don't think he's one of the ones who hunted down the mother, though. I think it was everyone who was sitting in that table. And in doing so, that's probably who it is. I'm just going to chalk this up to that's the, the teacher lounge and just, you know, he's popped in Dracula style when he shouldn't have, but either way, this is going to get crazy because they know something's up, they know it very well could be a student, and it's going to be interesting because what I said last week was that our boy was just going to come to school the next day like nothing happened, and that's exactly what occurred. Yeah, they bring up the fact that a teacher went missing, maybe he got lost in a labyrinth, but that doesn't seem likely. Right now, they have no reason to suspect that the goody two-shoes and smiley Oliver is actually some psychopath running a cult who's trying to hunt down his mother's murderers. And I really like what they're able to do, despite having some very uh, Stranger Danger vibes from some of these teachers. I mean, when you have this old scientist dude licking a lollipop and then giving students the lollipops, I'm just like, bro, where is Chris Hansen when you need him? This dude needs to be locked up or at the very least be the next one that we end up killing. But they do a really good job at once again flexing what was pretty much my favorite part of the show in the beginning, which was the Magic Academy side. It wasn't just basic spells. It wasn't basic potions classes. You actually felt like it was really interesting. The idea of picking your broom, right? It's not just like it's a floating broom or like you channel your magic into it and it is what it is. No, this thing's like basically alive. And the idea of it almost choosing you, you see how popular our girl is as all these brooms are trying to take her. And the one she ends up taking is apparently Oliver's mother's broom that has had a bit of an attitude problem since no longer having a witch or a warlock to ride it. And very cool stuff there. And obviously the whole like magical engineering class, despite having a very creepy teacher, was actually pretty damn cool because you have pretty much like these bombs that you have to try to get like the core out. And one of them, unfortunately, we can't do. So we're just trying to run for the hills. Pete crashes and burns, Oliver takes a bunch of snakes for him, and then what does our boy Guy do? Pours a bunch of water on himself, gets attacked by the snakes, and then just zaps electricity to, through him. Not enough to hurt him, but enough to fry those snakes. And I'm like, bro, this is what's so cool about this, is they don't just do basic, okay, we're gonna burn the snakes, that's bad snakes. No, like, they just really think things through, and they do something interesting with Pete's storyline. Because Pete, from the beginning of this show, 
has felt like an outcast. Like, that's literally been his character. He's been, you know, he's from pretty much a non-magical family, and everything about him, like, from the school's perspective has kind of pushed him away, right? Very intelligent, book smart, but not a lot of magical abilities there. And then the idea of, like, this almost awakening and the reverse kind of introduction, it's interesting because you are very skeptical of the school in general. Who can you trust? I mean, the character we thought was very nice to trolls, and of course our girl Katie turns out to be a psychopath, so student council presidents or any of these students, you never know who's going to stab us on the back next, but it almost seems like the reason this school is so dangerous and so chaos is the fact that the teachers, the like the majority of the teachers, not all of them, there is some teachers who are probably completely innocent, but the fact that the main people, especially the headmistress, are just, they're evil psychopaths or just they have a lot of dark cobwebs in their closet, they make the school living hell, so the students who probably want to make it a lot more nice and not so, oh, if you go down the hall and take the wrong right, you might get your head cut off. They're probably trying to change this for the better. And unfortunately, a lot of the people in charge of the school don't really allow for that to happen, which is why the nice hidden reversey club is nice to have a safe place for characters, especially like that, which are, as Oliver say, very rare. It doesn't happen a lot, but as we can see, it probably actually allows for them to have more, like, interesting magic abilities or be able to tap into more magic than a lot of students will as they're usually restricted clearly by their orientation here so it's interesting to see what they did i really liked it i thought this episode kind of felt like two episodes or maybe even three episodes not because it dragged out but because it almost felt like the magic broom stuff or the the classes where snakes are attacking us or the reversey stuff it all felt like a full episode's worth of content yet it was a normal length episode. Sure, they let the episode continue to play as the credits played, but we still had the opening. It took out a minute and a half of the runtime, but damn, this didn't feel like 21, 22 minutes. This, this felt like a good hour of content because the pacing was right, it explored things, and has me really eager for more. Like, of course, we knew Oliver wasn't just gonna jump in and start cutting more heads off. He's working in the shadows, and it probably won't be until two or three, maybe even more, are gone before maybe people really start to piece it together. And I'm kind of under the assumption that Pete will probably be the first one to realize something's up, especially given that they are roommates, even if you put that curtain up like Pete requested. At the end of the day, I feel like they're close enough, especially after this episode, that Pete might be the one to maybe trail him or maybe even just outright ask what's going on. But it'll be interesting because there's a lot of dark secrets about this school but at the end of the day, it's nice to have ally Oliver who can hook Pete up and really just show that Pete isn't alone, right? So let me know what you thought of episode seven of Reign of the Seven Spellblades down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell, of course, and get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. Like I mentioned, we do have a full live reaction to today's wonderful episode available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you also get a video shout out. So today we have a Golden Angel 1517, Lelouch CC, Little Big Trouble, Gomasana, Paul Tar, and Hakuri Oni. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.